Hi there and welcome. I'm Dave from SUP Antics and in this video we're going to take a look at how to use a kayak sail on our paddleboard. A few of you may be saying, why? This is stand-up paddleboarding, isn't it? Well, I found they really do offer a great deal of fun for less than £20 and definitely worth a try. Plus, if the wind is in the right direction, you'll be able to cover a great deal of ground for zero effort. So maybe a, a touring top tip. Before we begin, let's just remind ourselves that taking part in any form of paddle sport or outdoor pursuit involves an element of assumed risk. OK, let's go through the contents. We'll cover sailing fundamentals about wind direction, board direction and how to set the sail relative to the wind. We'll go through how to set the sail up on your board. We'll take a look at how to steer. We'll also look at some top tips to get you sailing like a pro. And finally, there's some further info with other great videos about how to get you going. If everybody's ready, then let's begin. Sailing fundamentals. OK, the first thing we need to be able to do is to identify which direction the wind is coming from. At a high level, this will be looking at the forecast at home and thinking which venues would suit the current westerly wind. When we get to the venue, we, we need to use any flags that are visible, direction of travel for the clouds, how the winds are being blown, and most importantly, the direction of ripples on the surface of the water. All of these will help identify which way the wind is blowing. Once we know the direction of the wind, the next thing is to work out which direction we can travel on our board by using the sail. And we'll take a look at three scenarios. First up, we'll look at when the wind is coming directly from behind us. This is called running and we're being pushed along by the wind and our sail is perpendicular to the board. We can keep our sail in this position with the wind direction about 45 degrees either side and to keep a straight course will only require a small input from our paddle. Next is when the wind is coming from our side and this is called reaching. In order to stop our sail flapping and collapsing, we need to change it to about to the 45 degree position relative to the board. Now the wind in the sail is starting to push the nose of the board away from our course, so we need more input from the paddle to steer our course. If we were a windsurfer or in a dinghy, we would start to drop the dagger board or the centre board to prevent us from being blown sideways by the wind. Finally is when the wind is starting to come from the front and this is called close hold. Again, if we were in a dinghy, we would be sheeting in the sail to stop it flapping and collapsing and ensuring our centre board was fully down to prevent us from being blown sideways. Due to the shape of our sail and the fact we have no centre board, close all sailing is not for us. So in summary, running, yep, is easy. Reaching is doable after some practice, but close all sailing is not achievable. Setting up the sail on your board. Once you've unpacked the sail from its cover and it's popped into shape, it should, it should look like this. There are slightly different designs, but they should all have broadly the same parts. And we'll run through the parts now. So number one is the main sail area with the window. Number two is the one centimetre ribbon control line with a small carabiner. So the little carabiner is here. Um, 
Next is we've got two one centimeter haul down ribbons, again, each with its own little carabiner. We've got the two plastic snap hooks attached to the draw cord here. Yep, yeah, there's the draw cord um, little stopper. And finally, we've got the elastic loop, which you can use for storage on the board or for when you actually put it back in the bag. There are a couple of ways um, to attach your sail um, to the board. Um, first up, you can use the uh, you can use the two plastic snap hooks and draw cord. I found this a bit fiddly and the draw cord tends to slip when it's windy, resulting in the sail rocking about on the board. What I tend to do uh, is I use the small carabiners um, on the two haul down ribbons. I found that works really well. It's um, not as fiddly and definitely if there's a strong wind, then the sail uh, holds its position really well. What I've actually found is the best options is to get these ribbons as short as possible before I connect it to the board. And, and I do that by disconnecting the, the carabiner off the end of the ribbon and actually you, there's a little loop here and you can connect the, um, one carabiner here and the second carabiner there. And finally, I use uh, on the control line, I don't use the as supplied carabiner, it's really small. I use a full size carabiner to attach the control line to my quick release belt. Um, but we've got a few more details on the next slide. Setting up the sail on your board continued. Okay, we can see the two uh, plastic hooks um, attached to the draw cord but we are going to use the small carabiners to attach the, uh, the sail um, to the board D-rings. So here's my two small carabiners attached to the sail. And then again, I use the, um, the, front, the front two D-rings to actually, to actually connect to the sail. So this is the sail in position um, uh, and, I've, I've, and I've attached the control ribbon to my quick release belt using a full size carabiner. Okay, this is the last uh, uh, the last slide for sail setup. So um, to store the sail, we'll just simply fold it into a figure of eight, use the elastic loop um, to secure them, then you yeah, have to simply just push it under the front bungees. And when we found a good breeze, just kneel down, remove the sail from the bungees and the elastic uh, elastic loop, grab the control line carabiner and stand up. Once the sail is pulling and, and looks good, we can clip the carabiner to our quick release, uh, quick release waist belt. So yeah, sorted, we're off. Okay, um, steering while sailing. Okay. If the wind is coming um, directly from behind us or up to 45 degrees from the side, you can just use your paddle to steer as a rudder or take a few strokes on one side or use a cross bow turn to keep us um, just slightly adjust the course. If the wind is coming from the side of the board, then this is going to start to collapse um, collapse the sail. So, so to combat this, we can adjust the top position of the sail um, by using the control lines because the control lines slide uh, from side to side here. So if the wind is, is coming from our right side, then we would adjust the shown and that would tend to move the top of the sail over to our left and stop it collapsing. So that, um, that approach really works well when, when the wind's actually coming from the side. We're still going to have to use our paddle though to actually, um, to actually steer um, and, and keep on course. Okay, we've got some top tips. So number one is 
be safe. So always use a quick release belt to attach to the sail. This way, if you fall off and the board or the leash or the sail becomes entangled or snagged with an obstacle, you can safely release, release yourself. The sail only looks small, but in a moderate wind, it can be very powerful and difficult, difficult to control until you get the hang of it. So I would recommend you practice in a safe location, especially depowering the sail and folding it away. Good venues to practice on would be a small or medium sized lake or maybe a medium sized river where you can't get blown miles off the shore or blown onto objects like trees or a dam. Using the sail on the sea or a large lake with an offshore wind could result in you being quickly carried a long way from the shore, resulting in a long paddle back against the wind. So choose your venue, wind direction and wind strength carefully. Keep the board in trim. When it's windy, the sail tends to force the nose of the board down, creating drag and making the board unstable. So move back a bit to keep the board in trim. When reaching, the sail can make the board roll, creating drag and again making the board more unstable. So by changing the weight distribution on our feet, we can keep the board level. How to depower the sail. If we're feeling a little bit out of control due to the wind strength, or we actually want to stow the sail, the easiest way to do this is, is to kneel down. This will then tilt the sail forward and allowing the wind to actually spill out of the sail. Therefore, you could gain control and maybe stand back up, or you could start to actually um, fold the sail into a figure of eight and pack it underneath the front bungees. Be kind to your sail. Be careful when folding the sail. It's easy to overdo it and break the outer pole. And remember, when you get home, remember to unfold the sail and hang it out to dry. The other thing I found is storing the sail in its fully open state will pro prolong its life as the outer pole is not under tension. OK, this is a final top tip um, we'll look at paddling through wind shadows. So here's the ripple ribbon control line with the carabiner uh, clipped to my quick release belt. So if I find I enter a wind shadow, but I can see in 50 meters that there's a good breeze again, then I won't kneel down and fold and store the sail under the bungees. I'll twist the sail into a figure of eight and store it between my legs and start to paddle forward. This means it's really easy to de deploy the sail once I reach the wind. Further information. There are some great videos out there and I'll include the links to a few in the YouTube video description. Sailorboard TV goes through more information about developing um, your sailing knowledge. Darren from Westcourt 100 has got some great um, kayak sailing videos and he, he spends quite a bit of time on folding and storing the sail. And finally, we've got Outdoor Play, which shows us another method for turning when downwinding. If you would like some on the water coaching, then please get in touch at dave at subantics.co.uk or visit our website subantics.co.uk. We run one-to-one -one or small group sessions for people who have their own equipment 
for SUP introduction, safety and rescue courses, paddle improvement workshops, confidence building and guided trips. I hope you found the sailing video interesting and please get in touch for improvement suggestions or more information. Thanks for watching and happy sailing.